all good things must come to an end. And Magento One is no exception. Now, I've known old Magento One for about 12 years now. It's been a good friend to me and to a lot of merchants just trying to figure out this whole e-commerce thing. Unfortunately, his time has passed. Magenta One will officially be removed from life support on June 30th of this year. So pull yourself up a chair and let's talk about it. Now I'm going to be straight with you. I don't really like it when somebody tries to tell me what to do. Much less when someone forces me to do something I don't want to or tells me something I paid for is now worthless. And you may be feeling quite the same way about your Magento One website. Some big corporation with more money than we could imagine putting an undue hardship on you with no regards for its effect on your business. It's not fair, but you know what? Life's not fair. Business is most definitely not fair. It's time you suck it up, put your big boy pants on, and get to work because the end of Magento One is coming whether you like it or not. Don't worry. I'm gonna help you as much as I can and we're about to go over your options in this video. I've also created a guide at magento.jamerson.com where we're organizing all the useful Magento One end of life content that we can find. The link to that is in the description if what we cover here just isn't enough for you. We've also created a downloadable migration guide that goes over all the things you should be considering when looking for your next e-commerce platform and you can find it at that same link. Magento released version 2.0 way back in November of 2015. So about four and a half years they've been supporting both versions of the platform. Now, they originally announced the Magento One end of life for like the end of 2018 or something, and due to a bit of understandable backlash, they pushed it out 18 months to June 2020 just to give everyone more time to adjust. And despite that generous timeline, here you are, not adjusted. What all of that means is, if you've been paying attention, you've had a lot of time to prepare and it's not really that unfair at all. I mean, you can expect a company to support a product indefinitely. Now, I've seen instances where some smaller non-partner agencies were still recommending and building Magento One sites all the way through 2019 because that's all they really knew. Now, I feel bad for those merchants, but for the rest of us, we should be more prepared than a lot of us seem to be. So now you're here, getting pretty close to the last minute and wondering what your options are. Well. Let's get into it. There are really only two options for you. You stay on Magento 1 or you move to something else. I mean, that something else could be Magento 2 or it could be any other platform of your choosing. Let's explore option number one, which is to do nothing. It's an option. It's your site. I don't know if I would go that way. Definitely not long term, but you do you. There are a lot of people claiming they'll support you if you decide to stay on Magento 1. There are open source initiatives to try and fork the code base and continue to provide patches as needed for the platform. The problem is all of these are volunteer based open source initiatives. When there's no real commercial backing for something like that, they tend to fade out more times than not. Life always eventually gets in the way of these passion projects. As more people move off the platform and fewer need those patches, the likelihood of getting them in a timely manner diminishes significantly. Now your Magento One site's not gonna just stop working on the deadline. So if you need to stay on it short term because you can't get migrated before the deadline, then maybe that's a reasonable option. But the longer you stay on the platform, the more unneeded risk you're adding to your e-commerce business. If you're gonna go this route, I highly suggest you look at one of the hosting providers that are officially supporting Magento One merchants post the end of life. Now, they aren't writing security patches for it, so even this is not going to really make staying on Magento One a long-term solution. But they're providing some additional security measures to help give you a little peace of mind to get you by until you figure things out. Not to keep pushing the migration guide that I mentioned above, but we have a lot more information than I can cover here about some of these hosting offerings and really all of this Magento One end of life mess. Okay, forget it. I'm pushing the damn guide. Put a lot of effort into it and the link is in the description, magento.jamerson.com. Now, that I've hopefully convinced you to consider options other than staying on Magento One. Let's talk about what those options are. Most merchants I've talked to that have waited until the last minute, particularly small merchants, are still under the assumption that moving from Magento One to Magento Two is just an upgrade. It's not. Get that completely out of your head. Magento themselves will call it a migration. And that's fancy marketing speak for, it's not a simple upgrade. It's a lot of work, so it's in your best interest to consider your options. Option one is obviously staying on Magento One, which is not a long-term option at all, in my opinion. 
But option two is going to be migrating to another platform. We'll call this option 2A, which is staying with Magento, but moving to Magento 2. In this scenario, you're going to go with either Magento Commerce, which is the Enterprise Edition, or Magento Open Source. Now, which is right for you? It's not really what this video is about, but it's good to educate yourself about it so you can make that decision. And if you have questions about it, just ping me and I'll be happy to discuss it. Now, they call it a migration, but you really have to rethink just about everything. Your theme? Rebuild it. Custom modules, reevaluate and rewrite them. Third party modules, find new ones that work with Magento 2. Integrations, redo them. This is starting to sound a lot like a replatform because that's pretty much what it is. Now, there is benefit from choosing Magento 2. If you're trying to recreate a modernized version of what you currently have, then you kind of know what you're up against and what you'll need to do to recreate that experience and functionality and that it is possible to do with Magento 2. A lot of the code itself may need to be tweaked, but the theory and overall architectural concept behind you create your functionality will be really similar to Magento 1. Not to mention that if Magento has been right for your business, then perhaps it's still right for your business. But again, there's a much bigger conversation that I can't cover here in this video or it'd be hours long. So option 2B is to move but to a different platform. Now it's a lot like option 2A, but you choose a platform other than Magento. Now I think the biggest options for most of the merchants still out there on Magento 1, other than Magento 2, are probably Big Commerce and Shopify, but that is far from an exhaustive list. There is an overwhelmingly large amount of options available. And that's one of the biggest differences now than when a lot of merchants chose Magento in the first place. When most of you chose Magento for your store, it was an oasis in a desert. By far the best option for just about anyone. Now, there are a lot of really good options available, each with various strengths and weaknesses. It's up to you to figure out which one is best for your site. Now, I'm in the middle of creating a lot of these platform evaluations to give you more info about how each of these compare to one another. Guess where I'm gonna put those? Oh yeah, that's right. The migration guide has a link in the description. Regardless of whether you're moving to Magento 2, some other platform, or battening down the hatches to ride out Magento 1 until the end of days, it's time you started moving. Head on over to this migration guide at magento.jamerson.com to see the information I'm constantly compiling about this transition to learn more and start educating yourself for the transition. Let me know in the comments if you have any Magento 1 end of life questions that I didn't answer here, and I'll be happy to get those answered for you. Also, if anyone has any useful content about Magento One End of Life you want added to my sweet, sweet migration guide, comment and let me know. And for those experts that are inevitably out there watching this, what useful information did I miss about the Magento One End of Life transition? Let me know your thoughts. Do not let my opinion be the only one that's heard. If you enjoyed this, consider hitting that thumbs up button and you can always subscribe for more of this delectable e-commerce goodness. There are awesome videos I've popped up on the screen here that might be of interest to you. Watching those really helps the channel out and Lord knows we can use all the help we can get. I appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.